Let's think about who bears the burden of attacks in different situations. And in this video, we're going to focus on insulin. And insulin is interesting. It's what's needed for, by diabetes in order to maintain their blood sugar level. So for them, you can almost imagine they need this just to survive. It almost has an infinite marginal benefit for them. So they're willing, no matter, no matter what the price, they're essentially willing to take the insulin that they need to take. So for example, even if the price of insulin were a dollar, if the doctors in this town say collectively all the diabetics need 3,000 vials a year, they will take 3,000 vials a year. If the price is $80 a vial, they'll still take 3,000 vials a year. So within reason, within a reasonable price range, you have no change in quantity demanded. So in this case, at least in a reasonable price range, the, the demand curve for insulin is vertical. Obviously, if we went up to prices like $9 million uh, uh, per vial, then all of a sudden some, insulin, some diabetics just won't be able to afford it, and all of a sudden the curve wouldn't be able to be vertical anymore. But at least in a reasonable price range, you have a vertical curve. So this right over here is our demand curve. That is our demand curve. And you might remember when we talked about elasticity, this is perfectly inelastic demand. So it's perfectly inelastic. Perfectly inelastic. And the way you could think about it, I kind of think of a brick as perfectly inelastic. No matter how much you push or pull on the brick, within reason, at least with my level of strength, you're not going to be able to deform the, the brick. And that's the opposite of a rubber brand, which is very elastic. Or you can think about the definition of elasticity, the one we've been using. Elasticity is equal to percent change in quantity over percent change in price. And over here, no matter how much we change price within reason, at least within this range of price along this curve, people are still going to demand three, a quantity of 3,000 vials per year. And let me just draw a, let's just draw a supply curve here. So let's say the supply curve looks something like that. And so if you have, so this is supply. So if you have no taxes, no uh, regulation of this market, based on the way I've drawn it right over here, the equilibrium price lands us right at around $75. And I did a little research before this video. It actually turns out that is about the, the market price for a vial of insulin and the equilibrium quantity, because that is the exact quantity that people need, is 3,000 vials. Now, a, a slightly interesting thing to think about in this situation, where you have perfectly inelastic demand, is what is the producer surplus and the consumer surplus. So the producer surplus is how much more money they're getting relative to their, you could view them as their opportunity cost or their incremental marginal cost. And here, and we've done it multiple times, this is the producer surplus right over here. It's the area between the price is equal to the clearing price and our supply curve. So that's our producer surplus. Producer surplus. And our consumer surplus is where things get a little bit interesting. Consumer surplus is how much more marginal benefit people are getting than what they are paying. And we've traditionally said, OK, that's the area between the demand curve and the, and the price. But now all of a sudden, this area, this area is infinite. This area is infinite. And one way to think about it is that these diabetics get, you could almost say, close to infinite marginal benefit from that insulin. It allows them to have a healthy life. It allows them to, to stay alive. So for them, it's essentially priceless. But it's kind of an interesting idea that you have infinite consumer surplus. It's not necessarily saying that this is like a great deal for the diabetics. It's really just saying that their, their benefit is something that they need to survive. If this was just slightly more elastic, so if we were to get maybe to a slightly more real world scenario, in a real world, if things got a little bit more expensive, there might be a few diabetics who would all of a sudden try to lower their dose or something like that. And so the curve in a, in a real world actually might have some very slight elasticity. It would still be a very steep slope, but it would actually have some slight elasticity. And so you can imagine if I kept taking this up and up and up, then at some point it actually would bound the area. But it would, so maybe it goes up here. Maybe you know, if this was like $2 million up here, then the demand would go down dramatically. But it would be bounded. But it is a very, very, very large consumer surplus. Now with that out of the way, let's think about what happens if some misguided politician decides to tax insulin. Obviously a very bad idea, and nothing that I would ever advocate, but let's think about who would bear the burden. I think you could probably guess who would bear the burden if you had to put a tax, but we'll actually see it. We'll think it through with our, with our supply and our, our perfectly inelastic demand curve. So what ex ends up getting passed is a tax of $10 per vial. And I'm just making it, instead of a percentage, I'm just doing it as a fixed amount so that we get kind of a fixed shift in terms of the perceived, the perceived supply price. 
So for the producers, this is what they need to get. If you want them to produce 3,000 vials, they need, to, they need to get $75. If you want to make, get them to even produce that first vial, they need to get $60. So the, what the producers need to get plus the tax, we can draw a new curve. And we've done this multiple times. So for that very first vial, the producer needs 60. But then what the, you add the tax there, it's going to be $70. For 1,000 vials, it looks like it's going to be, I don't know, 60-something. You add the tax, it's going to move, move up to here. For 3,000 vials, the producers need around $75, $76. You add 10 to it, it gets to $85, $86, like that. So what you get is this new curve. New curve. You could view it as a price from the, from the consumer's point of view. Or you could view it as, as the supply plus tax curve. So I'll call this the supply. Supply plus tax, plus tax curve. That's hard to read, but that says tax right over there. This is the supply plus tax curve. And so where does that intersect our perfectly inelastic demand curve? Well, as you can imagine, people, the, even though the prices are higher, people still have to get exactly 3,000 vials per year. And so they intersect right at that quantity, but now we have a new equilibrium price. Our new equilibrium price is exactly $10 higher. And so it is, it is about, if this was 75 or 76, this is 85 or 86. So this distance right over here, this distance right over here is 10. So let's think about a few things. Let's think about the total revenue that the government is going to get in this situation. So the total revenue is going to be that $10 times the 3,000 vials per year, times 3,000. So they're going to get $30,000, $30,000 per, per year. Now let's think about whose who's surplus that came out of. So the tax revenue, this right over here is the tax revenue. That right over there is the tax revenue. The producers are still going to have the exact same producer surplus. So all of that, all of that tax revenue came directly out of the consumer surplus. Now another thing, another interesting thing to note here is because we had this perfectly inelastic demand that even when you raised the price, it didn't lower the quantity demanded, that we actually don't have a deadweight loss here because this was perfectly inelastic. We're actually having the same quantity produced. And so the, the, you, some of, you have a transfer of surplus from essentially the diabetics to the government in this situation, but you don't have any lost surplus here because there's not, there's no, the, there's no there's no lost area i guess you could say between between where the supply curve and the and the uh, between where the supply curve and the demand curves intersect or another way to think about it is the quantity demanded did not go down because the price went up